Liberty Me, here with Lucy Steigerwald, a new columnist for antiwar.com and a wonderful blogger behind the Stag blog. Lucy, thanks so much for joining us. Thanks for having me. I've wanted to have you uh, on one of our shows, you know, you used to do Liberty Minded, uh, wanted to have you on that for a long time, because, you know, you just write a lot of great stuff, and uh, more people should pay attention to it. Not that a lot of people don't already, but <laughs> more should. Uh, it's, it's, it's very good stuff. Um, I agree. I, Thank I, you. <laughs> good, good, good. I want to start with uh, Dianne Feinstein, uh, a wonderful, just uh, the, the epitome of, of public servant, if you will. She's, she's not happy right now and because the NSA apparently is spying on internal documents from her office. Now, I mean, she was a full-throated supporter of the NSA, and now she's complaining about the NSA spying on her. I mean, is this hypocrisy why Americans are having less and less patience for Congress? And if she's been the subject of the NSA, how do we know that she's not a Russian double agent? Um, well, I hope that this hypocrisy is why Americans are horrified with Congress. I hope it's not because they're not getting enough done, you know, which is the, I guess, sort of liberal slur most of the time. Um, I mean, you have to love this. This is what the, this is what, you know, my people, the Germans, invented the word schadenfreude for. Yeah. Because it's, it's so wonderful. And it, it also, I mean... Comparing it to a subject that I write slightly more about, I like my national security, but I've been doing cops more. I'm instantly reminded of um, the Mayor Shea Calvo, who was, you know, a white mayor of, uh, I can't remember in Virginia, you know, but he got this dr drug raid on his house. His dogs were killed a couple of years ago. Radley Balco, my, you know, inspirational guru, covered this. Um, and it, like, this guy had no idea about uh, no-knock raids and all that sort of thing. And, like, when it, to, to put it short, <laughs> when it happens to people with a certain amount of power and power to get more attention, I hate to say it in the case of, of Calvo, who did nothing wrong as far as I know, but it's probably a good thing. It happens to the non-marginalized, non-minority people, and suddenly, now it's a big deal. And suddenly the powerful people are like, wait a minute, this happens to me now. Maybe I don't like it after all. So it's good. For once in my life, it's good that someone is being spied on. Right. I mean, without a doubt, you know, um, libertarians and, you know, just anyone concerned with the size and scope of government, we, we toe a fine line between understanding that these are actual human beings. You know, I think House of Cards does a decent job with this. I mean, even though it's portraying monsters, we have to understand that these are also human beings, definitely. And so even if we don't feel empathy for them, I guess we understand that, you know, they can experience the same kind of terror that we do whenever we understand that we're being spied on. And hopefully they, they understand that and learn from that and think, wow, maybe I shouldn't be doing this and brutalizing all the people who are assumed to be my constituents. You'd hope. I mean, that's a little too magnanimous, at least for Feinstein. But I think in a lot yeah. of cases, you know, in co certain cops who I just know were trained to be paranoid, to be twitchy on their trigger fingers. Um, you know, people who grew up in military families and are very sort of, they buy into all the propaganda about it. People do get these lessons. I mean, we, we were talking about libertarian inside baseball stuff, and there are people who are, I mean, they've never heard of some of the ideas that we don't even question at this point, you know? So you got a way between they're all humans and most of them disagree or think they disagree uh, with us, but they're people. And unless they're the top tier baddies, I think a fair amount of empathy is sort of necessary. Sure, without a doubt. So left-leaning media outlets love to point out how uh, free market types like us don't care about income or social equality. That's their, that's their pet <laughs> thing. But I mean, do you know what both the left and the right are both just absolutely face-meltingly abysmal at mentioning? I mean, the ridiculous inequality caused by xenophobic and amoral immigration laws. I, you recently wrote about militarized borders for antiwar.com, and I was listening to NPR just the other day, and I'm hearing stories about, like, children who are, like, three and four years old 
who are, they're clutching teddy bears and they're forced to defend their right to be in the country in a, in a court of law. I mean, that's like the most horrific and sad thing I have ever heard in my entire life. Like, what's wrong with this picture? Why is it that we get criticized for not, for, for not caring about people who are marginalized, but you know, the left and the right both completely ignore this thing that is just absolutely abhorrent? Um, oh, there's a lot of angles I could approach in answering that. I mean, with immigration, conservatives are particularly, uh, they're uh, repellent to me because so many of their professed values are being violated by these laws. Their values, pro-family values, <laughs> either people are split up or people are leaving their families to go to a new country to get money to send back to their families. Um, <laughs> free markets, I mean... You know, there are people going where the money is and going and working for the wages they're willing to work, which are, you know, below minimum wage much, most of the time, I'm sure. Um, but it comes back to this this idea of mine first, you know, and that, that means Americans first. And it's a general fear of whom these people might be, you know. One in a million might be a scary, scary terrorist, you know. We can't be sure they're not and all that sort of thing. I mean... There are some questions in a welfare warfare state when it comes to people who, I mean, there, there, there are legitimate things to talk about, but you don't deport first, you don't militarize the border first and then figure those out later, because that's not the humanitarian or pro-family response. Um, and when it comes to liberals, my anti-war piece, I, I, I don't really want to criticize people who were, you know, were going to grasp that, like, uh, stuck bill, immigration reform bill. Because it, you know, it, it seems like it's an improvement in so many ways, but I would really worry about that because the border is already so scary, and it start to sound all Alex Jonesian. But like, I don't want the borders of the country to look like that. I don't want it for the people trying to get in and work, and I don't want it for any of us. You know, I feel like the the xenophobic bunker dwellers should should consider how much they want border security either, because, you know. Ron Paul said back in the day, borders, borders can be used to keep people in as well. It's not, that's not a, you know, a suggestion that, you know, tomorrow that's going to happen. It's just a general play it safe and don't give them these powers. And the Fourth Amendment already is practically meaningless on the borders. I mean, how, how militarized does it need to get? Sure, sure. But, you know, I mean, you can, you can make these claims, I think, without sounding Alex Jones-ish or, or, or conspiratorial. I, so. I mean, I really, I do. You know, one of the criticisms that's, that gets levied against folks that like to bring up these civil libertarian issues is that, you know, well, do you really think that Obama is going to use drones to, to kill a massive amount of Americans? No, I don't. Do you really think that we're going to construct a border fence to keep people from leaving the country? No, I don't. But that doesn't mean that the power shouldn't be there. Because, you know, there are ex extenuating circumstances that can occur. We could elect someone who's that bad. I don't, if we do elect someone that bad, I don't want them to have that power. <laughs> I mean, I got I gotta praise Rand Paul circa last year for a moment. The drone filibuster, you know, all the all the national security types were like, well, he's like clearly he's crazy. He's showing his true colors. He's just like his crazy old dad, you know, because obviously a weaponized drone is not anywhere near killing an American on American soil. Like that's not imminent. The thing is. We are always responding to the last law that was already passed. Oh, it's already a law. It's already been passed, whatever it is, be it the Patriot Act or Obamacare or something. And then you have to actually try to get rid of a past law, which is practically impossible, because if it wasn't, why would we have so many laws? For once, you know, Rand Paul, a reputable mainstream politician, was trying to go after a potential future use of some technology and some government power which I think is so rare and so commendable to try to go after that. And you, exactly what you get is crazy old Rand Paul. He's so Alex Jones. He thinks this is some tyranny. Instead, he's saying, look what could happen in the future. Absolutely. And we need a lot more of that from everybody, I think. Absolutely. And, With you that sounding crazy. No, no, <laughs> no. that exaggeration. I mean, one of my favorite uh, memes that came from that whole filibuster, I mean, I know this is, is kind of, Pointless in, in the big picture since that was I, I think that was an incredible moment in American history, 
But you know, the best part of waking up is no Hellfire missile in your cafe experience. <laughs> That's, that, I would agree. I had coffee, <laughs> no Hellfire missiles today. It was good. Lucy, uh, thanks so much for being on the show. Uh, really sure. appreciate it and uh, look forward to having you back soon. All right, bye. Hey, thanks so much.